Well, we're here at the SOS show. It's uh, February 21st, something like that, in uh, uh, 2020. And we sort of just got here and got set up. And my old buddy John Rommel here walked by. And uh, he's got some interesting things that he, I thought you collectors would like to see. It's, it's, uh, it's really terrific. First of all, John collects nothing but pretty much mint stuff. Mm -hmm. And he really likes it if there's some sort of personalization. And uh, John is an expert in researching material, as you'll see when we get a little further into the interview. But I, I, a lot of times, I just have a small reference library. And I, when I get a name dagger, like an army dagger, I'll look it up to see if he won the German cross or something. And, and when I don't find anything, I, I just put the dagger up on the site. So in this case, I have a lovely army dagger here. It's a real beauty. And on the reverse of it, I think you can see it. On the reverse of it, it has the name, what is the name, John? Lieutenant Reisman. Reisman, R-E-I-S-S-M-A-N-N. -S -S the SS's are one letter that they make in Germany, so it's a little difficult sometimes to understand what it is. So I put this dagger on my site as, uh, here's a nice personalized dagger named the Reisman. Maybe you could research it. And what did you do, John? <laughs> Tell us. Tell us what you did. I he, researched. First of all, he knocked me down and bought the dagger. Well, I had to do that. You had to do <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. No, I, I spent a quick uh, week and a half doing some initial research and came up with this on the guy. Now tell, tell us what you found on this man. Well, I started... What was his whole name? Uh, Werner Reisman. Werner Reisman. And I uh, went through the rank lists first uh, for the Army guys, which is what I'll typically do when I'm researching them. And I found, uh, I found him in the 101st uh, Infantry Regiment, right there. And then as so I... The, so oh. see, now we know he exists at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the, what happened? I uh, went in a little further, found out he ended up in a, in a Panzer regiment. It's getting more exciting. Yeah. Then I started going through various internet places, forums, and so forth to find out more about that particular group. group. Yeah. Found out that he was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross as a captain. So here we are selling an army dagger that was awarded to a Knight's Cross winner. Yeah. And only through John's research could this be known. So he's, he's taken a $1,300 dagger and made it into what God knows what it's <laughs> worth. But, uh, and Whitman takes the hit, but you're going to make out. Oh, I'll so love it. This is him, this right? Is, this is Reisman. He's in a uh, tropical uniform. He's in, a, he's in his Panzer. He would have been in the 15th Panzer at this time. Uh, with his uh, Knight's Cross, the Iron Cross. He had a uh, EK-1, EK-2, infantry assault. He had a, uh, I don't know if it's a black or a silver wound badge. Yeah. Uh, but what I found really interesting was uh, I found a letter that he had written to another Panzer gentleman in 48 after the war. I have a guy currently dis uh, deciphering it for How me. How did you ever find that? Uh, doing the online yeah. research. Yeah, I wow. found that the, uh, this was a, a dealer over in the Netherlands that uh -huh. had it. Oh. But then uh, I found in uh, a couple references where he is actually with Rommel at the Battle of Gazala, May 31st, and 1942. And Rommel's asking his advice and so yeah. forth, and uh, it was regarding the surrender of an enemy unit. Is that true? Yeah, it, it's kind of it's kind of funny because if uh, let me quote it, he says, "I think Rommel states, I think they've had enough Reisman." Waved to them with white flags, they'll surrender. Reisman was skeptical, but Rommel, uh, or Rommel waved a white flag and the opposing troops answered with handkerchiefs and scarves. And 3,000 British troops surrendered at that point. So here's a guy who's just a name on an army dagger that becomes a real war hero. Yeah. Uh, and especially with all the awards and so forth. 
So the point of all this, collectors, is to let you know that when you have the ability to do just a little bit more, sometimes it can be really, really rewarding. And I'm very proud of John that he can do something like this. Thank because you. to me, it, it makes the dagger come alive. Yeah. It's no longer just a hunk of metal. It's, it's so, history at that point. It's his, well, with John again, uh, he just took this lovely SS out of his bag. Uh, as you can see, it has a terrific grip and beautiful nickel guards, and the anodizing on the scabbard is, oh, it's perfect. It's about one of the nicest yeah. ones oh, I've seen. A, and a beautiful hanger that looks period to the piece, and at least it's the right vintage. But then we're going to take this out, and when we hold up this side of it, you'll notice that, well, uh, there's an SS number there. I hope you can see that on the video. So what did you do then, John, when you when you found this SS number? Well, the good thing was I didn't have to do the research on this one. It was already done. Ah, <laughs> somebody else did it. Okay. So, but, yeah, but you didn't have all the fun, though. You oh, no, 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 I did. But uh, what I found really interesting was the ground uh, partial room. Yeah, it is a partial room too. And this is about what I can make out. Yeah. So there's part of the name you can see and part of the description. And right. a couple of the guys that have looked at it, we think that uh, this doctor who owned it probably did the, the racing himself. But it, see what's so interesting, this doctor uh, where was where was he connected with the Lebensborn? He was he was one of the Lebensborn doctors. So he was delivering the babies that were from the SS guys right. with right. the German right. Dutch maidens. You 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 collectors know what the Lebensborn was. That was the organization that the SS started to literally mate uh, qualified SS men with qualified racial. Uh, women yes. so that they could raise it's the so-called master race. We all know that was crap, but that's <laughs> that's that's what they did. So that's just history. We're not endorsing anything. Yep. Here. So what happened then, John? I I've been able. I'm still uh, going through some of the documents to get them deciphered, um, but. And some of the research I did do, I found that uh, found him in the Dean Stalter list. Uh, found out he was awarded a uh, Totenkopf. Uh, he was awarded a Deegan. Yeah. Uh, so somewhere those are out there. I'd love to find out where they're at. What uh, What rank was he? Do you know? Uh, he was a uh, Sturmbundführer. Oh, that's that's a uh, like almost a colonel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's really interesting. Now again, collectors. This is a beautiful SS dagger, and given that it's a partial ROM, uh, even if it didn't have a serial number on it, it's about a five or six thousand dollar dagger in the condition it's in. <laughs> but once you can do something like this again, uh, you got a whole history here, a whole life, and what it, how interesting it is too. And I think the research only adds value oh, to these it daggers. Oh, absolutely adds value. Because, um, like I said, it. When you can put a face oh, yeah. to the piece, and yeah. then you start really wondering. You can, you know, who carried it. You right. wonder what they were going through, what they were thinking, and with the whole war surrounding them. Yeah. And, uh, it, it's and yeah, right. it's a it's a great hobby, collectors, especially when you start getting it into these kind of things too. You can really enhance the enjoyment of it and build a nice little asset for yourself too. Yeah. Well, we're over here at uh, my friend Tony Caliendo. I think uh, you guys have seen Tony before on our videos. He's a great guy, originally from Chicago, former policeman, knowing for, oh God, how long? 40 years. 40 years. Tony, what is this box you got here? It's a cigar box given to uh, Colonel Von Thoma at the time uh, when they, some battle that they finished at the end of the uh, Spanish Civil War, given to oh. him on Christmas Eve of 1938. Yeah, 
uh, you collectors know that the Germans helped the uh, Spanish during their civil war, and I think most of it was to test out their tanks and their airplanes. Right. That, you know, they just made like they really cared about the Spanish, which I'm not so sure they did. Well, this is beautiful. It has like a replica of a tank badge. The, on the, it. Uh, the uh, Legion Condor tank badge. Can I open it up? Certainly. <laughs> See, look, you can get a lot of cigars in there, collectors. Wow, that's really beautiful. What kind of money is that about, just roughly? Uh, 4500 to 5000 yeah. That's really a nice thing. Wow. I think it's Walmart on the back here somewhere. Oh, it probably is over here. And then it's got a dedication on the other yeah. side, right? Yeah, dedication on look the at, front. Look at that, collectors. Wow. That's no joke. Look at the amount of letters that were on and there. And that's the that's what English, it says. Trans English translation. Wow. Boy, that's cool. That's cool, Tony. And what's this uh, Hitler photo you have in the original frame? That's a beautiful thing. See, collectors, this is the, uh, the frame that Hitler used to make personal presentations to his friends as well as government officials, uh, important people, etc. And uh, it has the, the uh, standard AH uh, initials and the eagle. It's never been cleaned, which is really nice. It's all black. Yep. Don't you like that, Tony? I it the way. Never yeah. touched it. Never touched. And then there's a dedication on it above Hitler's breast here with his signature below. Did you ever figure out what the dedication was, Tony? No, I couldn't read it. Oh. But it was it's an original uh, Heinrich Hoffmann picture, that, yeah. which is Hitler's personal photographer. Yeah. And it's stamped on the back of the picture, Heinrich Hoffmann. I've never seen that particular photograph before, so I think it's pretty scarce. Yes, it is. Yeah. Normally it's that one picture with the white thing where right. they would sign it. Boy, that's a, that's a beautiful thing. What, what are we talking about there in value? It's 50, a lot, I'm sure. Well, to me, 15000 to sixteen five. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Yep. These are very important These things, things collectors. I've had, uh, I've had this for 35, 40 years almost. This is out of your personal yeah, Oh, yeah. Both of them. Wow, what, what wonderful things to me. I can see why you saved them. So there you see, collectors. These are stuff Tony's been collecting for at least 40 years. And these are things that he found over the years that he thought, oh, I ain't selling this. And now you're getting a little bit, not too old. But yeah, I'll be 75 bit. in April, so. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you look or, good to me. Or if I change it, I'll be 57. Ah, I like that better. Change the numbers better. around. Well, you're getting you're getting close to me, but you're still a youngster. Yeah. <laughs> Where's your lovely wife? I haven't seen her. Oh, there she is. We're talking as yeah. usual. Well, thanks a lot, Tony. We appreciate it. Good luck to you. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we're looking at some more stuff here that's at Tony Caliendo's table. More things that Tony's had for many years, and I can see why he saved them. Uh, this is a lion head sword, and note how the hilt is in here. This is a little different than you usually see. And, and on the Langette itself is the guard star. <clears throat> and as, as I told you in one of our videos before, there were certain regiments that were designated by the Kaiser that were under his personal command. And that's where you would see the guard star. And on this particular sword, <coughs> it has it has brass um, hangers on it. Uh, but the lower one was removed because in 1906 the style changed. And I think I told you about that in an earlier video. But then look at the incredible Damascus blade. And you'll see that this blade is dated 1884, which makes it right after the Franco-Prussian War. So more, more than likely, this officer uh, was a fighter during, during that time. Let's see what it says on the other side. Yeah, the, uh, there's a, uh, a Hohenzollern eagle. You know, that's the seal of the Kaiser and Damastau and all that. But, 
a very beautiful thing. Actually, when you consider this sword is just about 150 years old, and look at the condition of the shark skin still. I mean, it's uh, just beautiful. What are we talking here, Tony, roughly price wise? About 2000 That's pretty reasonable. I mean, you know, if you're an imperial collector, how many things do you see from the Franco Prussian War for God's sake, right? It's not, and in this condition. And you can see why Tony saved it all the years. That's because he has good taste in everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> At least I always found that out. But anyhow, that's a cool thing. And I'll show you some other things here that you almost never see. Down on the table here, Tony has, this is all Olic porcelain. All white porcelain dishes. These dishes were made very late in the war, probably 44 or 45. And there's always been a lot of, oh, well, uh, you know, there's no record of it and all that. That's baloney. Uh, it's been proven that these things have come from veterans, so we know they were actually issued. And they're absolutely beautiful. With the uh, Golden Eagles and the AH monogram, and just how, how beautiful it is. Look how low swung the cups are and all. You've got that Art Deco look, you know, that everybody likes. And then you've got some, um, some napkins, that's a, that's a towel. Towels and napkins. Yeah. Just beautiful, Tony. Are there any olive marks on the porcelain? Yes. Let us see what they look like. Oh yeah, here we go. See that, collectors? That's what you want to see. And it's under the glaze. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. So there you are. We're just seeing a little bit of what the SOS show is here. We've got major guys like Tony that keep it going. Great promoters of the show. Great dealers, honest people, and friends. Right, Tony? Yes, sir. That's so for sure. Well, here we are at the SOS show, and as we usually do, we'll do a little uh, scan by our tables and give you guys a chance to see what we're showing this show. So we'll walk along here. You can see we start out with a with a little Olic. If any people wanted to have a pet dog, this is really a nice one, and it won't won't bite you back, and you don't have to feed it. You can just enjoy looking at it every day. That's a nice, uh, the fencer, the rarest olic piece there is. There's only two of them known. That's the third one. Very, very rare, extremely desirable. And coming down the way here, we have a kind of an interesting little plaque here for a shooting prize. You don't see that sort of thing too much. Some nice daggers. I have a couple of... Um, Stone Mint Red Cross Officer's Daggers. And it's the funniest thing, they both came in within two days of each other from two separate families, and they're both identical mint. It's the first time I've ever had something like that happen. It's just uh, the luck of the draw sometime. Really, really beautiful Red Cross officers. Even the nut on top has never been turned. I can show you that because it's interesting to, you don't see. When do you see one where the nut's never been turned? And they're both like that. Pretty cool, huh? And then we... We got some police bayonets and some naval daggers and a couple of rare uh, etch bayonets. They're always nice. Uh, uh, this one is the Eichhorn one with the Panzer etch on it. Very, very rare and extremely desirable and in mint condition. If you're going to collect etch bayonets, you got to get that one. Keep trying, Bob. You got to get a ball, man. Uh, 
more stuff. And, and we got some a neat, couple of neat uniforms. Uh, this outfit, uh, it's an SA Pioneer. And there was only one Pioneer group to each SA regiment. So these are extremely rare. We kind of got this one here to cover up the sinful armbands. There you go. It's completely original. Yeah, me too. Comes with the belt and also has the the um, uh, the, the uh, pants with it, the breeches and the shoulder boards. See how it ties in with the color pink. Very very rare uniform. Very desirable. Not one moth track in it. Coming along, we more daggers. Everybody knows that's our specialty. Some interesting things. SS pieces. Some wonderful um, uh, AH uh, silver. These are some of the rarer pieces that you see. Great stuff, very collectible, tremendous investment. And here's an interesting plate from a war school in Dresden. KS for Kriegschule, D for Dresden with the open winged eagle done in gold. Very beautiful plate. And you gotta have a Hitler street sign, of course. We have a rare U9 naval dagger. Uh, these were uh, daggers that had the commemorative U9 uh, submarine on the blade, and they're they're very very rare. Uh, this is an original in in nice condition. If you're collecting Navy daggers, that's a key piece. And we just picked up at the show a pair of signs coming from a Panzer regiment, a completely original. One must have been outside the outpost and the other one was probably next to the door of the, uh, of the office. They look like they're pre-war to me, but I don't know that much about Ponzer things, but uh, very worthwhile signs. We have El Duce here, giant bronze, all solid. And in these drawers, we, we have some nice metals. Got an array of uh, things, some good German crosses. Here's a German cross in cloth. Some good things here. We try to carry a little bit of everything so that we can hopefully uh, interest everybody. Drawer full of belt buckles. Hey, this is a rare one here political leader. Uh, here's an Italian one with all the guilt still on it. As you know, there's a lot of collectors that just specialize in buckles and it's a, it's a great hobby because you can get into it relatively inexpensively and work your way up. Some swords. Another nice uniform also is it's untouched early political leader. These are the tabs that were used um, before about 1938 and, and they wore a regular armband before that too. The real jazzy armbands came out later on and this uniform comes with the original belt and also has the britches. No mothing anywhere. Wonderful piece. And more daggers. Neat stuff, airplane models, 
uh, an original SS Yule Leuchter. These were the candles that Himmler gave out at Christmas to NCOs. And some interesting items here. There's an original naval bulkhead clock. Still runs well. It's got the, um, the naval eagle on it. And it's marked as naval here with a serial number. Great little item. Some cigarette cases. Uh, an SS marked um, cigarette lighter. Some neat things. Well, we're walking around and we thought you collectors might like to see something a little different that's actually very glorious. And if you look here, this is a uh, fantastic display of Italian fascist items. Just unbelievable. The, the belts, all brocades with the gilded buckles. Fantastic stuff, almost unobtainable, especially in this kind of condition. And then with the with the daggers, he he has the 39 model here with a pair of mint hangers. And the 37 model, mint completely, the one with the chain. And then he's got an earlier piece here that was a general's example with a, it's a white celluloid grip with it and the knot. And then another general's example in the, th in the 37 version with the knot and that grip is ivory grip plates. And then next to it are, I believe these are the 33 models. And when you bought this dagger, you got it with a dress scabbard as well as a working type scabbard. That's why you see the two different type scabbards. But fascist daggers in this condition, almost unattainable and very, very hot items. Every time we get a fascist piece, it goes in, a, goes in an instant, it seems. So those are good things to, to look out for, very good investments. You know, most of these, like a... Uh, a decent, a decent 37 model. Uh, if you can pick it up for 13, 1400, that's really good. But if it's mint, it might cost you 2,000. But it's still worth it. And the 39 model is about the same, depending on the condition of the hangers. You know, a piece like this with hangers like that, easily worth 2,000 dollars. The knots alone are worth a couple hundred dollars on them. So good things, collectors. Well, as we usually do, we get we get so much email about this guy. You all know who you know who all this this man is, Mr. Bill. And um, as usual, he's got some absolutely sterling stuff here. Uh, this is certainly worth uh, talking about. You'll see it's a it's a look off a sword. With, a, with an engraved blade having a blue panel in the center uh, and the Luftwaffe eagle uh, up against the blue. It's very, very impressive. And then when we turn it over, when we turn it over, well, uh, it's a shooting prize. It's upside down there, but you, you can, or no, it's not, sorry, you can get the idea there. What's the date on it, Bill? 1938, Tom. 1938. It's to this, uh, the third, third loof off a group, or? Where did you ever find this? Well, a friend of mine located it a few years ago, and I told him I was very interested in, the, in purchasing it. Yeah. And then lo and behold, he approached me uh, a while later and said, Oh, by the way, I have the second model Luftwaffe dagger. That's what we're going to show you next. And the beautiful thing is, it's to the same group in the same year, 1938. Collectors, this is a Wiresburg piece with the early droop tail eagle on it. Beautiful frosting. See how the frosting makes that etch work almost jump in your face? That's the kind of stuff you like to see. And then we'll turn it over. And there we are, it's another shooting prize. So what a combination here. And a lot of times with Wiresburg pieces too, you will see that nice gilded um, swastika, which also is always a crowd pleaser. It's something I was interested in, Tom, when you look closely, this gentleman must have really enjoyed his dagger because he's worn it. You can see where the marks of Oh, rings uh, the carrying, uh, yes, yeah, the rings will cut in. 
the, I thought that was fascinating. Because of the weight of the dagger, see how the ring has cut into the band? See that? That kind of talks to you, doesn't it? It sure does. Yeah. He's really enjoyed his shooting prize. Yeah. So we've put them together. Uh, it looks partner. like he never took it out of the scout. No, it, the, the, he, blade, uh, the blade's really nice. He said, this is my shooting prize. You'll have to take my word for it because right. I ain't taking it out of the scout. Not it's much wear on them. No. Do you have anything else that was particularly nice, Bill? Well, as most people know, Tom and I have enjoyed something together over the years, and that is the collecting of uh, special Navy daggers. And wow. this, this happened to come into my possession uh, Look at the chasing on that. It's, elong it's elongated. It's um, longer than, uh, than with most, a, yeah. With the ivory grip and the yeah. original port of pee. Yeah, and I it, can see that. And I'll let you hold it, Tom. You and All right. Ron, Rob can get the uh, the right angles. And I like the little scalloping like at the top of the it. throat. Just little details like that I that they, they were just so You see so that, great collectors, at. where the throat is scalloped also? I don't think I've ever seen that. That's never, really, never really seen that pattern. Thing. So No. The ivory is absolutely perfect. It, it yeah. just looks... It looks like the, the whole dagger when you it looks like it's alive almost. It, it does. It, it does. Boy, I love that serrated throat. It's funny then they didn't do anything with the rings. No, they did not. I guess they didn't want to overdo it. Yeah, maybe. That may have been, you know, I thought that would have been it. This is jazzy enough. <laughs> yeah, a little over the top. Oh, look at that beautiful white corn blade. Wow, what a winner. Got the fouled anchor uh, motif on it in the nautical pattern. Boy, this is a lovely, lovely uh, thing. Of all of the navy daggers that I've accumulated over the years, this, this is the prettiest one I, yeah. think, I think I've ever had. Yeah, the condition is just fabulous. As it usually is with Mr. Given, he doesn't mess with the beat up stuff. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Robbie. That's a wonderful piece. Thank you, Tom. Thanks yeah. for taking the time to come by and, and say hi to us. And the show's, we the we show's have to, on. or they'll write to us and complain. <laughs> well, thanks to everybody. Well, we came next door here to, to yeah. see Joe Polsonelli. Uh, and as usual, he's got a lot of rubble here. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> good seeing you again. How are you doing, Joe? Yeah, you got the gloves on. Oh. I get complaints. People say, Whitman, you got to be wearing gloves if you're going to be touching this stuff. So, you know. I'm uh, just looking here, and you got a couple of um, really nice um, chain daggers. Uh, could we take a look at the early one, Joe? Sure, Tom. Let's look at uh, the first run, which I yeah. think was made from September to January of 36. Is that correct? Yeah. Very short run. Uh, yeah. This one is all nickel throughout. Beautiful nickel cross guards. Fabulous ebony grip. Blade is terrific. And we'll turn it over, and you'll see the... Um, the blade is unmarked like we like to see them. And of course, everything is perfect here. Let's see what the scabbard looks like, Joe. Thanks, Brad. Now, see on these early 36 pieces uh, with what I call the Type 2 chain, uh, a lot of times you'll see a uh, painted scabbard. And in the case of this scabbard, the paint is perfect. And the blackening that's behind the uh, intertwined ray swastikas uh, on the center ramp is almost all there. And see how nice it matches the blackening uh, behind the skulls and the runes marks. And on the Type 2, you can tell them right away because the top nib here that holds the chain in uh, is tapered. On the other Type chains, it's not tapered, it's all the same. And then we see on the reverse, they should be lightly stamped. Yep, there's a light stamp. On these early ones like this, the stamp was always light. I don't very know Very lightly yeah, stamped. Very light, yeah. But this is a real honey. Let's see the other one, Joe. Yeah. The next one, Tom, is, uh, I guess you call it mid-period. Yeah. You know how they discern between B1 or B2, yeah. nickel? Um... Well, to me, when we see mid-period, we're going to start to see fittings that are plated, not solid. Correct. But when you see condition like this, uh, just absolutely remarkable. And this has an aluminum eagle, 
So usually you could say this is probably about 38 or 39, something like that. Um, absolutely gorgeous grip. Just, just terrific throughout. Unmarked blade on the reverse. Mint. Beautiful. Let's see the scabbard on this well, let's one, Let's see Joe. the scabbard, huh? Yeah. Uh, that's for a different kind of call. Uh, you got 14. You got 450 on it. It's not mine. Get it for Now see what you have here. These fittings are going to be plated. Uh, because, again, this is 38, something like that. Uh, but you still have the darkening in the background. And this is what I call the type 2 chain. See how the uh, the top nibs are that hold it to the clover leaf? And the detail to the skulls is phenomenal. And a lot of times you'll see these with anodized scabbards. And usually, but not always, when there's an anodized scabbard, you'll usually see two screws holding the center ramp. Not always, but most of the time. Nice. Let's see what the back looks like, and yeah, here we go again with the with the light stamping. The burnishing is really great on oh, that piece as well, Tom. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's so it's often they, people wonderful. want to shine them up, and, no, uh, no, no, no. and just like we say, you take the life out of it. Well, like some guy said, you can shine it up in five minutes, and then it takes 50 years for it to get back the way it was. So there you are. Thank Thanks, you, Joe. Yeah. Wonderful things as usual. We wish you a good deal. Yeah. Well, well, Tom, before you go, yeah, I gotta get Bill over here. Hey, Bill. Uh, you know, Tom comes here all the time. We, we hardly ever give him any credit. So, Bill and I would like to present you. Uh oh, here we go. Are you wearing your little dagger, by the way? Uh, no. Well, you oh. see, swagger. Everybody likes a sharp dressed man. So you need a little swagger. Oh, I see. So we'd like to give you this World War I officer swagger stick. Nicely engraved with a lizard. So That's you can point it around this. Exactly. Yeah. Your pet lizard. You can yeah. poke, poke Robbie with it once in a while. When he gets so out. when I tell my help to do something, there I can go. use this as an enforcer. That's oh, it's very kind of Enjoy. Thank we you. just want to thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. This beautiful woman has just come up to our table. What is your name? Karen Whitmire. Karen Whitmire. It sounds close to my name. I'm Tom Whitmire, so we're pretty close. Okay. And you got a nice little puppy here. Yes, her name is Gracie. Hiya, Gracie. Oh, oh aren't you a deer? To. Oh, she's a deer. I love dogs. She's good. She what, can is, tell. What, what is this beautiful helmet here that you well, uh, we, we'd like to know a little bit about it. We just purchased it. Okay. And uh, uh, if I'm not mistaken, how many out here they Okay. It's, um, it's what we call a laurel police. That's why it has the brown trim. Right. Okay. Uh, and this has got the fancy dress plume on the top that they would wear for parades. Right. And what is it made out of? Uh, usually they're made out of whack, or, yeah, whack hair. Okay. Yeah. What is wacky? It comes from um, the the India. <laughs> yeah, from uh, in the Indian uh, in the areas of India the mountains. Uh, yak hair, so we should say. Okay. And and this was the dress plume that went with it. Um, the helmet is is a um, uh, enlisted man's piece. It's not an officer. Um, but the condition of it is absolutely superb. Good. Just beautiful. So right here. The inside still has a great liner. You can still see the maker mark name in it. I see they're from Ohm. That was a city in Germany. Uh, still is. Um, just a, uh, a beautiful police helmet. Now, collectors, this is, I'm always saying, if you can afford it, you should buy the best. And this is an example of what the best of the group would be. Oh, great. Yeah, so it's it's really, really a good thing. Okay. I don't know what you paid for it, but it's worth a good deal. It's really nice stuff. Yeah. Right, well, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank yes, sir. you. I appreciate it. It was great meeting you. Yeah. It's great to meet you. I <laughs> hope you're enjoying the show. Oh, yes, definitely. We all are. We came just about every year. And I believe we've seen you here last year. You, you would see me here every year. I'm a fixture, I guess. But, uh, 
And if you're in the business, you don't want to miss the SLS. That's right. Because remember, this is the biggest military show in the world. Right. There is nothing that comes close to it. The show of shows. The show of shows. So if you're interested in the hobby, this is where you want to come. You hear that, collectors? <laughs> All right, we're talking to a nice gentleman here. What is your name, sir? Dave Henschel, Tom. Dave, you got a great radio announcer voice. Thank you, Tom. You. Yes, sir. <laughs> you have a couple things here that uh, we looked at yesterday, and I thought that um, our people that watch these videos would like to see you. Now, when you're looking at, obviously, a, a hit and youth knife, and we take it out of the scabbard, and it's one with no motto, well, actually, well, yeah. we know. Yeah. And when we turn it around, we have to do it slow for the camera. There. When we turn it around, can you see that, Robbie, on the camera? Now, what we have here is an original uh, dedication on the blade, and the dedication it reads: Gewidmet von Stab der SA Standard 138. In other words, a gift from uh, this A standard, uh, but on a Hitler Youth Night. So this is mystifying, isn't it? it to me, it is. Yeah, we're There's all wondering. So what what's happened here for you collectors that do research? The Hitler Youth helped out the SA on a lot of things. They helped them with their, their different uh, parades, campaigns, things that they were doing. And what my opinion is on this knife is that probably the young man that was in charge of this group of Hitler Youth boys that were helping the SA did an outstanding job. And one of the SA leaders thought, well, let's do something. Brown, would you please return to row D by the back wall? Please return to row D by the back wall. So what's happened here, it was, the SA bought this knife, had it engraved to give to this young fella that had his group help them out. So you, you never see everything. I've never seen anything like this either. It's really a... Uh, well, I appreciate your input on it. Oh, it's a, it's a great thing. I love it. And the dedication is very well done. It's engraved, not etched. And then we have another dagger here. Um, I forget what was unusual about this piece, but... Uh, Let's see, it's an SS, of course, early SS. Aha! Well, see what's happened here, collectors. Uh, one of our great vets brought this piece home and thought, well, what am I going to do with this damn dagger? I'll never use it. Uh, maybe I can make it into something that's useful. And he probably worked in a machine shop or knew somebody in a machine shop. So they cut the end of the blade off and reshaped it. And this is the kind of stuff you see, you never know. I mean, it's a shame, yes. but it is yeah. uh, it is what it is. Uh, and uh, this at one time was a pretty nice uh, boker dagger, so there you go. It looks like it was even a ground room, mm -hmm. ground room. So these are some of the crazy things you see in the hobby. Well, at least it's good parts. That's anyhow. it, that's yeah. right, right. Good parts. Where did, where did you get this? There was a, a fellow that had a, a Wehrmacht uh, dagger yeah. for sale on Craigslist. Oh. And he said, I'll sell you that one. Right. And he said, I got another throw-in for you. Aha. Uh -huh. And he shipped them to me, and this came in the box. He kind of tried to, you know, describe it to me. Yeah. And I said, where did you get it? He said he, he befriended an old guy at a coffee shop. He was in his 90s. And... Uh, he collect the, the younger guy collected watches, and he and the old guy said, "I have watches. Come over to my house." So he went to the house, and there's all kinds of stuff. And he saw these daggers, there. I see. and he said, "Can I, I buy the, Can I buy your daggers?" He said, "I'm not ready to sell them." Yeah. About two years went by. They're having coffee, and the old fellow says, "Come over to my my house. I'll sell you those daggers." Well, you said this was a throw-in. You yeah. didn't get it for free, did you? I didn't pay a dime for it. It was a throw-in. So I paid sure. 400 for the Wehrmacht dagger, yeah. and that was a toss in. Well, you, you got a scabbard that's good and good hilt, so you did there okay. You All right. And an interesting story to tell. 
That's right? correct, Tom. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much appreciate for coming your, to the show. You're we welcome. It. All yes, right, sir. have a good day. Thank you, you too now. Well, we're walking down the aisles a little bit, and uh, there's a man here who has a, a wonderful selection of uniforms, and we just thought you'd like to take a look at some of this stuff. I mean, Starts out with a, a look of admin or forestry, I guess it is, and, a, and an army cavalry. You know, beautiful parade dress. See how nice those uh, sleeve emblems are, and not a bad price either. That's not bad for something like that. This is a U.S. leather jacket. Um, another army piece here. Uh, uh, this guy was a, uh, a major, I guess, for that, or, yeah, major. The uh, Breast Eagle's got a little damage to it, but it looks all right. Here's a tropical outfit. See, with the tropical Breast Eagle in the sand color. And another Army uh, parade dress. This is artillery with the red. Red on the, uh, the shoulder boards and then the beautiful cuffs on it. You can see the uh, where the ribbons were, the loops are still there. Again, not a, not a bad price at all for something like that. Um, this, I guess, is some kind of forestry outfit. Beautiful condition, beautiful wool. Really, really nice. And here we have another uh, army, I think it's Signals with this color, a, kind of a lemon color, Signals branch. And then next to that is a, um, a police officer. See that beautiful police insignia? Really great. And again, nice loops on it, beautiful collar tabs. And then at the end here is another um, artillery. Uh, I'm not sure what the extra uh, stripes mean, but it, it probably has to do with a real high-ranking NCO uh, rank, I would think. But a, but a beautiful piece. And we go around the corner, and here you are. Here's another another police. This is a rural police. And you can tell that because of the brown, the brown collar. You know how rural police bayonets have the brown um, leather scabbard, and and then this is some type of a look like a kind of work shirt or something. I don't know. I don't really know what that is. But as you can see, you can uh, you can pick up original German uniforms here at not a lot of money and in nice condition. So it pays to come to these shows. It's really worthwhile. And you never know, you might even be able to knock the owner down a little bit on the money. So it's a, it's a good thing to investigate. All right, collectors. I keep telling you that the SOS is the place to come to really see the absolute best. And here's something that's really a special treat, has never been seen at any other show. And what you're looking at here, in case you don't know already, these are field marshal batons. Uh, one is for the Luftwaffe, the blue one. The other one is for the Army. Uh, the blue one was made for von Kesselring, and the Army was made for von Reichenau. Uh, the one on the top was made by Wilm, W-I-L-M, the famous Berlin jeweler. And the one on the bottom was made by J. Godet who was one of Goering's preferred jewelers. Uh, they're absolutely, unbelievably beautiful. Uh, and each baton is realistically today worth close to $2 million. Uh, all, both of them are totally documented. They're just fantastic things. Something that should absolutely be in a museum. And here we are, the pleasure of seeing them here at the SOS. The owner also has a private guard here uh, just to make sure that there's no flim clamming or any problems that could possibly happen. So this, I wish I could pick them up and show them to you, but that's out of the question. You'll just have to imagine how beautiful they look. Just incredible. If the camera can get into some of the detail uh, of the eagles, 
and the, and the uh, uh, Iron Crosses. They're, they're just absolutely fabulous. Uh, on the end of the batons, too, the, the Luftwaffe one has the Luftwaffe Eagle uh, on the pommel, and the Army example has a Wehrmacht Eagle. And on the other side, uh, they both have um, Iron Crosses. Uh, the awards are engraved around the base of the pommel. Each one completely individually made, probably would have taken months uh, to do something this like this from the jewelers. Uh, and from the standpoint of Third Reich history, uh, in terms of value, uh, field marshal batons have to be the most valuable thing there is. I can't think of anything else in the hobby with the exception of maybe the Dietrich sword or the Hermann Goering wedding sword uh, that would be worth in the two million dollar area. So really something special here to see collectors. I hope you enjoy it. I'm glad that I can show you. I wish I could get this glass open but I can't figure out how to do it. Well good morning viewers. Uh, we're today's Saturday, last day of the show and uh, we just met a man, Mr. Tim. He's been collecting a while, and uh, he says he came to the show because he saw our videos. How about that? So what do you got here, Tim, you want to show us? Got an SS dagger. It's type one. Oh, it must be a chain dagger then. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at it. Okay. It looks like a nice one. Thank you, sir. Yep. Out here. Oh yeah, there we go, collectors. See the Type 1 chain? Remember I was telling you in yesterday's video how the, uh, the top uh, connectors are straight on these Type 1s? Just like you want to see it, and then you can see through the top clover on it and see the DRGM mark in there. It's got a nice painted scabbard, beautiful grip. Yeah, that grip is sensational, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's got nice, uh, nice paint, and let's see what the blade looks like. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it looks all right. Yeah, it looks like the the tip here was a little bit. Uh, uh, maybe somebody dropped it once or something. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. But uh, still, still pretty good. You said you needed some repair. What did you want to repair? Um, the handle and this part. Yeah, you got a chip right here. Yes, there. sir. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that's the kind of thing we used to fix and you never even know it. And, uh, if I get somebody else, you know, yes, stay sir. in touch. And, uh, but anyhow, this is a nice dagger and uh, congratulations. Thank right. you very much, sir. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for showing it to us. Yes, sir. Good luck Thank at the you. show. Thank yeah. you, sir. Yes, sir. Well, collectors, we're over here to see my old friend Tom Whiteman, not Tom Whitman. There you yeah, go. Yeah, uh, see the difference? Now, I just have to tell you guys that we do get confused uh, who's who. I go to the hotel, I go to the Hilton Garden, I say I'm Tom Whiteman, I want to check into my room. I get up there, there's a jacuzzi, there's a woman in the room waiting for me, and a, a bunch of cigars. I, I just can't, I can't believe it. Well, sometimes uh, confusion can be good. Greetings and welcome to and the then I find, And then I find out that I got the wrong room, I got his room, and he got my room. But the same exact thing has happened to me, too, where I've gotten Tom's room. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that's the way. Names are pretty much alike, but Tom is the owner of Legacy Collectibles. And I want to make sure you guys know I have a YouTube YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube Legacy Collectibles. I have about seven videos. What I specialize in is guns. Um, I have a couple of things I can show you real quick. Um, are you going to be able to pick that up? Um, this is a as good as they come. Wow, that's that's a rare, very rare holster. So the gun would be a party leader with the plastic grip and the uh, party leader eagle on it. This has a party leader 
and it would go with a PPK. You can barely see it, but it says Walder PPK in there. Oh, yeah. And uh, this was made in about 1938, and uh, it's, it's about as good as they come. Beautiful condition. That's an aluminum stud, which the earlier ones kind of like daggers. You know, the earlier ones had a, a brass stud, and then they went to an aluminum uh, stud. So you, so you can date it from that. I can date it from that. So these are the kinds of things that I sell. Um, this is uh, dated 1942, and it has a police eagle on it. Yeah. And a PPK, and you wow, can that's a beauty. see the condition of that PPK. Yeah. That's a high polished finish, but as Eagle End proof, which means it's 1940 or 41. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, and it's a police piece. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm going to show you here. On the on the frame, it has an Eagle C. You probably can't even see that, but that's a Nazi Eagle C. And just like the American weapons, that would be the initial of the inspector. So oh, C, yeah. we don't know who his what his name is, but an Eagle C. Police accepted in a police holster. Um, the early brown grip, later they went to a black grip, but this is just a uh, phenomenal piece. What, what's a piece like that worth in that kind of condition? Uh, the gun is about 2000 You had the holster another 200 so I actually had this on the table for 2200 and it sold. I had a good show. We, we yeah. sold a lot of guns. And, well, that uh, seems pretty reasonable when you're talking that kind of condition. Or you could buy a dagger. Or you could buy a dagger, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, collectors, I know that the, Tom is a very good man. I've known him a number of years. Uh, he can be trusted, I can assure you that. Uh, and he likes my name. And I like his name. And I hope that uh, when you guys are browsing the website, if you can take a look at Legacy Collectibles. Because I know a lot of you like, uh, like to put a gun next to a dagger. I mean, many of you may have a J.P. Sauer SA dagger. And what a wonderful gun to buy and put it yeah, right next to it. Exactly. Right? The yeah. gun the gun and the dagger goes together. It so. Does. so it's worthwhile to Come on over. take a look and and as I say, he's a nice man and he'll treat you right. I guarantee it. And if not, tell me about it and I'll cut him out of the video. There you go. There you go. Hey, thanks a lot for doing that. Appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. We're over here at the Gerhardt Windbeel stand. And as you know, we've shown Gerhard in the past a number of times, and he always has some terrific, interesting things. And uh, something that caught my eye right away is this wonderful carved boar. And it comes out of um, Cavern Hall, and it has, uh, of course, Hermann Goering's crest on the front of it. And, and the detail throughout is absolutely extraordinary, just unbelievable. Uh, Gerhardt was pointing out that it shows tree stumps, but they actually have the age rings that you would see in a tree in the carving. It just, yeah. uh, it just, uh, what, it's what amazing. detail? Amazing yeah. detail. Uh, yeah. uh, what is this oak, or what do you think it was made out of? Uh, no, no, it's not oak. Not they oak. Don't use oak for carving. No, they don't. No, no. no. maybe walnut or something, uh, something like that. Whatever it is, it's um, it's absolutely fabulous. Um, it's a huge piece, and you can just imagine this in Karen Hall, how wonderful it looked. I happen to think that boars are the most beautiful creatures in the world, where everybody else would say they're ugly, but they just have something about them. That, uh, is, and you're looking at that, that is really uh, beautiful. It, it is. Incredible. Yeah, I, I, when I first seen it, I fell in love with it. Oh, me too. I'm sorry to tell you though, collectors, I already bought it from Gerhardt. I just can't resist it. It's just the most beautiful thing I've seen at the show. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, sir. You're I welcome. appreciate that. Yeah, and I want to show the viewers what we have next door here that Gerhardt has done. You viewers, I'm sure, are familiar with the name Klesheim Castle. It was across the border in Austria. Um, the, um, uh, the Nazi party bought the castle, and it, it was probably built in the 1600s some, sometime then. 1690s. Yeah, something like that. And um, Hitler decided that he wanted to use Klesheim uh, as a place to greet, greet visiting dignitaries, right? Yep. Have affairs and functions. Exactly. And, and by the way, most of you collectors probably have seen Klesheim uh, silverware. 
And uh, people ask me, gee, there seems to be a lot of this Klesheim silverware. Well, it was a huge place, and they, they, these functions were probably attended by maybe hundreds of people, so they, they needed a lot of, a lot of silverware. But anyhow, what, what happened when Hitler uh, decided to renovate Klesheim, he had uh, new furniture and new fixtures, uh, crystal chandeliers, um, all kinds of things from soup to nuts to really make it nice. And what Gerhard has here, uh, he has two of the original chairs that were made for Klesheim. And if you look at the photograph of the Fuhrer here having a conversation, you can easily see that the, uh, the chairs are, are the same. Um, you can also see it in a uh, photograph where Hitler is consulting with, I think that's Linga or one of his um, adjutants, SS adjutants, and you can see the chairs in the back. And Gerhard, Gerhard has acquired um, uh, all of the furniture from Klesheim recently. So what an opportunity here to, uh, to really get something good. So just look, there's how the castle looked. I believe today Klesheim uh, is now a gambling casino. Is it right? Not? Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the end of the war, it became uh, Hitler, one of Hitler's uh, uh, Führer, Führer bunkers. Führer bunkers, yeah. right? And so you, they, they, you, a huge bunker on the back of the building that's yeah. still there and still used to. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you collectors probably know that a, a lot of the valuable documents and awards. That they were afraid were going to, they were stored in Berlin. They were afraid they were going to get destroyed with the bombing, so they moved them to Plesheim, and uh, a lot of those badges have been recovered and become very famous now. So this is a this is a great thing. How did you happen to acquire these things here? Um, my son lives in Salzburg, and um, oh, Salzburg's not far. Yeah, that yeah, is uh, yeah. um, just outside of yeah. Salzburg. Salzburg is where Mozart was born. Yeah. Beautiful place. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my son was um, contacted by one of his antique friends. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he told them I just bought um, a whole warehouse full of uh, furniture from the uh, oh, from the state of Salzburg or the county of Salzburg. And um, uh, it belonged to Hitler. And you, he looked at it. Boom. And he called, he called me, yeah. and I said, "Buy it." Buy it, yeah. And uh, yeah. if it is, if it is that, you know, and it turned out to be, um, oh, 100%. And, uh, it's over hundred pieces. Wow. You know, wow. Uh, all kind of um, yeah. uh, items. And when you look here. Uh, be careful you don't scratch it, Gerhard. Uh, uh, here, that has all the the label on here, you know. Oh, I see, the, from the Salzburg sale. Uh, with, there. The, with, the, yeah. with the inventory yeah. and everything. Yeah, wow. And, uh, and all the furniture is uh, documented in the videos, film, you know. Um, well, these, and, these are... Um, these are very important things, and yeah. it's so great because it's something new that we've discovered. Yeah, that, uh, you know, yeah we, we, you know, nobody, nobody knew it. knew about that yeah. uh, part yeah. of the thing because uh, uh, Hitler uh, kept it out of the newspapers, and uh, when they, when they showed it, uh, it, it was not mentioned where it was. Everybody presumed it was that's Berlin, and that's the way he, he wanted to keep it. And, um, I see. Yeah. So that was for security purposes. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. like um, um, just uh, uh, mile away yeah. across uh, the old German border. Yeah. That's nearly the, near the border. Yeah. There is uh, his old airport he had built for Berchtesgaden. Certainly, it was uh, closer to his castle than to yeah, that. That, that makes and, sense. Uh, and when the 38, when they built the autobahn across the border, yeah. uh, there was an extra exit for Klesheim, which is still there today. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And, um, you know, so it was extreme. And he built their own rail station yeah. that, that extended from uh, Salzburg. 
boy so into it, a it cliffside. So it became a very, very important yeah. place then. Yeah, Nobody so, seems to really know about yeah, it so from that standpoint. Yeah. Uh, the dignitaries didn't have to get out in Salzburg. They, yeah. they went out and just in Klesheim. And uh, that's where you see... Uh, 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 you missed it now, but... Um, uh, well, I, I saw Mussolini there. And, yeah, you're getting uh, out of the yeah. train and things yeah. like that. That's all in Klesheim. Um, wow. Uh, oh, this is this is really that something. That is 1944, and uh, mm -hmm. with a, uh, So this is this is collectors a, a new and, uh, a new discovery here. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. Well, congratulations, yeah. Gerhard. This mm -hmm. is uh, the buy of a lifetime. Yeah. And um, after I, we bought it, uh, he visited a friend, and the friend said, "What did you? And I haven't seen you. What did you yeah. do?" And so I uh, cleaned out the uh, furniture blown and some things like that. He said, oh, I have the, uh, the carpets. In 1970 I bought the carpets and uh, he was uh, renting them to, to movie studios, to, yeah. to, to, to yeah. television yeah. across Europe. And, uh, so um, now you got the carpets too? Yeah. yeah. The, of course. Yeah, the biggest one here where he's standing on, yeah. It's uh, 45 feet wow. wide, uh, long, yeah. and uh, about uh, 35 feet wide. You can imagine what kind of room uh, that was, you know? Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it must you have see been the really border just how, how big yeah. it is, yeah. you know? Yeah, even Herman looks small in here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're looking here at a uh, LAH original fencing outfit. Uh, a very, very extremely rare item with the original insignia and the SS diamond on the sleeve has snaps on the back. Because it's so embroidered. Uh, it's for em wash, you cannot wash it, you know. Yeah, yeah. For officer yeah. was that. Yeah. The rest it's, you can wash. Yeah. Boy, this is the first time I've ever seen one of these. I, it's the first time I ever seen yeah. one. Wow, that's a, that's a beautiful item. And, uh, and you see it. The trousers are with it too. Yeah, right? and the, it's oh. added here. So oh, yeah, for the. Little, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow, that's. Uh, you think that would fit you, Gerhardt? <laughs> <laughs> it would. It, a little it tight. It fit no. you or me. No, no, a little tight. Yeah. A little tight. Yeah. Wow, that's a wonderful item. Yeah, yeah. See this, collectors? You'll never see one another one again. It's the first one I've ever seen, and Gerhardt never saw one either. So nope. it shows you how rare it is. Actually, you probably could get more money than that. <laughs> Maybe seems, I should. Yeah. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Yeah. Uh, too reasonable. Yes. Okay. Well, we're going to uh, wind up our show here at the SOS, and uh, all you viewers have come to expect. Uh, Walter in every video. Uh, if he's not there, you all call me asking if he's sick or something. So I wanted to make sure you see Walter. And did you have a good show, Walter? No, I had an excellent show. Uh, you did, yeah. I know you made some terrific sales. Yes, uh, yeah. It, I was so lucky to get this collection of daggers and stuff. And yeah. wow, been doing well more than half of them are gone. Yeah. And yeah, other so, stuff, I mean, it's just been... Gangbusters, yeah. and the, the attendance of the show is fantastic. It was remarkable. Um, really fantastic. You know, in, in military uh, collectors, we're not used to seeing huge crowds like you see at a gun show. Right. And I can I can honestly tell you, I was going sideways trying yeah. to get through the crowd yesterday here. I've never seen anything like it. So yeah, uh, yeah we were so very, 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 very good. good. Thank you, Donald. Yeah, thank you, Donald. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Everybody had money in their pocket. Yeah. Her change. You're yeah, so I mean, used to guys. Uh, yeah. Oh, I would buy it. I don't think if there's I any money. question that things are better. In, no, in no collection. question. At all. It, it, it's uh, the interest level is back there. Prices are starting to go up again. A little bit, a little yes. Bit. So yeah. it's all. Yeah. You've got a a mind comp here, but but it's interesting because it's in English. Right? Yes, yes, yeah. and it's a. Um, if I remember correctly, it's a pre-war printing. Yeah. From Renal Hitchcock, 1940, Mein Kampf, fully annotated in See English. See that collectors all in English. And it See, was. See, they printed this for an American audience yeah. too. And it was only fifteen dollars. Wow. <laughs> that is a bargain. Yeah. But I tried to read one once in English, and 
you got I got about one ten chapter. <laughs> no, about ten pages, and, and I gave like, up because yeah. it's just so difficult. I know. So it is. difficult. Yeah. But well, it was. I think it was the largest selling book ever. Ever. Yeah, outside of the Bible. Outside of the Bible. Yeah. 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 Can you imagine that. But I guess everybody in Nazi Germany certainly had to have a copy well, of that. I mean, they didn't read it, but they had to have it in their house. Yep. If you were uh, smart, you had it. Yeah, yeah, if you were smart, you had yeah. it. <laughs> uh, and they marketed them all over the world, in America also. That's why we see these English versions. So, uh, and that's the thing that you collectors, that, that you like books or something, look into collecting mine comments because there's so many different editions oh my God, so many yes. years and there the there best are, one i had there are great values assigned i actually had rudolph hess's yeah see now that's something i actually that's had the one from rudolph hess thing. really really fancy yeah. leather bound and this and that yeah for I mean, about a week i had it uh, we have a mine comp that's absolutely huge yeah. that yeah. was made for Rosenberg. It uh -huh. has his name yeah. all yeah. in Special. your gold letters. Special name. Yeah. And um, uh, a book like that, it sells for like $25,000. So I know there's, no, there's no joke with these things. Yeah. Uh, uh, and they're worth looking into. But anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video. We tried to get as much as we can, but I'll tell you what, it was so busy yes. that we didn't have a lot really of time was. to uh, really go was. around. So, Sales were fantastic. Yeah, us too. So. Yep. So we'll see you in the next show, collectors. I guess Baltimore, maybe. I'll be there. You'll be there, Baltimore <laughs> Arms? Like All always, right. I'll be there. See you guys.